Verse 10 says, as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And verse 11, what comes next, is to me one of the most emotional verses in all of the Bible. Uh, a voice from heaven just kind of comes out of nowhere. Everybody's standing around watching this. There are witnesses here, dozens of people maybe, standing around watching all these people be baptized. Jesus is one of them. And then a voice just comes from out of nowhere, and God says publicly in front of everybody to his son, he says to Jesus in verse 11, look at this, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Please. And I just, I can't imagine how much this meant to Jesus to hear this. Jesus was only 30 years old when this happened, the start of his ministry, and he was crucified when he was 33. So he had a three-year public ministry. I can't imagine how many times over those three years that Jesus, you think about all the trials that he was going to go through, all the temptations, all the, the hurts and the struggles and all of the, 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 the stuff that he was going to go through in those three years and finally being crucified on a cross. I can't imagine how many times in his own mind Jesus must have come back to this day in his mind on the banks of the Jordan River when he heard and everyone heard, this is my son. With him I am well pleased. When things got tough, when times were dark, I can't imagine how many times Jesus must have remembered that day on the banks of the Jordan River when everyone who was around there heard, this is my son whom I love. In him I am well pleased. Basically the father said to the son, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of what you're doing and I believe in you. I believe in you, and I believe that the Spirit of God is going to affirm so many of you with this thought over the next couple of weeks as we talk about this. I believe that God is going to show some of you how much he believes in you. And so Jesus went out from this, and he started his public ministry, and you might know the story. He gathered around 12 guys called his disciples, and he, he taught them what he, well, a lot of what he knew, and um, it, they were 12 of the most uneducated um, just uh, guys you would not choose to start a team with. Jesus chooses these 12 guys, and he tells them, if you leave what you think is important, I'll teach you what's really important. Will you come? We'll do life together, and I'll teach you what I know. And, and that's what they did. For three years, that's what they did. They didn't study a little book. They didn't have a Bible study. They didn't have a formal class. They just did life together. As they went from town to town, and as Jesus taught in the synagogues from, from town to town, and as Jesus did miracles from town to town, they asked him questions, and he answered them. And Jesus would ask them questions, and they would answer, and they were wrong. And Jesus would be like, no, 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 this is what God is really like. Let me correct you here. Let me tell you what, what God's heart is really like. And at the end of those three years, at the end of that three-year period, Jesus was crucified, dead, and buried, and then God raised him from the dead. And he looks at these 11 who were left, because if you know the story, Judas betrayed him. There are 11 of these faithful who are left, and Jesus says to them in John 20, 21, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. He says to these 11, you 11 guys, I believe in you. As the Father believed in me, so I believe in you. And here we are today, 2,000 years later, and millions of Christians all over the world lifting up the name of Jesus, and it all started when a father believed in his son. And I believe that this is one of the most important things that we can do as a church. This is one of the most important things that we can believe as a church. This is one of the most important things we can put into practice as a church. We can tell those who are coming behind us. We can tell those young people who are coming behind us how much we believe in them and how much God believes in them. And we can set an example for them. We can set an example. In fact, there's this great verse when Paul talked about this in Corinthians. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. I love this verse of the Bible. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Uh, Paul wrote to these Christians who he cared about and who he loved, and he told them, follow my example as I follow the example of Jesus. Follow my example as I follow the example of Jesus. We need a church full of people who can honestly make that statement. Follow me as I follow Christ. Now, some of us, when we read this verse, we're like, oh, Paul's kind of arrogant. Like, who, who would say that? Who would be so arrogant as to say, follow me as I follow Jesus? But that's the farthest thing from the truth. Paul was not an arrogant guy at all. In fact, as his life went on, he wrote that he was the worst of sinners. And he said, I, I just, I am who I am because of the grace of Jesus, and I'm no one without the grace of Jesus. And I just, can you imagine being a parent? I mean, parents, can you imagine 
being able to say to your kids with all sincerity and with no pretension, follow us as we follow Jesus. Follow us as we follow Christ. But fathers, dads, can you imagine being able to say to your son or daughter with all sincerity and no pretension, follow your mother and I as we follow Jesus. Look at our lives and live like we live. Moms, mothers, can you imagine being able to look at your son or daughter and saying with all sincerity and no pretension, follow your father and I as we follow Jesus. Look at the way we live and model us. And most, most of us, it's the other way around, right? We've got kind of a, a do as we say, not as we do kind of mentality, right? If you, you, know, you mess up and you're like, oh no, no, I just, just do what I said, but don't actually live like I live. Can you imagine being able to say to your kids, no, 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 do as we do. As we follow Jesus, live like us. Some of you, uh, maybe single moms or dads, you know, can you imagine how powerful this would be in the lives of your kids is maybe you're thinking about possibly one day getting back in the dating scene or you know, you're maybe pursuing a relationship. Can you imagine as your kids get older how, how powerful it, be, it would be for them to hear from their mom or their dad, this is how you date. This is how you honor God in a dating relationship. This is how you, you, you honor God by saving sex for marriage. This is how you treat another person. This is how you honor God by treating another person the way you would want to be treated. Can you imagine how powerful that would be in the lives of your children? Do as I do. Follow me as I follow Christ. That's what Paul is saying. He's saying, you know, guys, Jesus is my model. Jesus is my role model. Jesus is my mentor. You know, like I've just been with him a little bit longer. I've been following him a little bit longer. Maybe I'm a little closer to him than you are at this stage in your life. And I want you to model what I do. I want you to follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And we're really going to dig into this next week, parents. So, so definitely come next week because um, I want you to be able to say that with all sincerity. Follow us. Follow us as we follow Jesus.